So good morning, my name is Daniel Kirsch and I'm a professor here at the University of Washington. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to this workshop. Uh, I think we have a fantastic program and I'm really looking forward to uh, listening and learning. This is not really my area, but we have some great experts and I think we're going to have fantastic discussions. So I don't want to take too much time before we get into the really interesting stuff. I just want to say, uh, thank the uh, people who have organized this, this workshop. It's uh, Joe Ito, uh, Yeshen Lin, Abe Ellis, uh, Bob Lasseter, and last but not least, Brian Johnson from here from the University of Washington. So, uh, welcome. I'm looking forward to taking part in some of this, but unfortunately, uh, you know, we also have some undergraduates, and at 10 o'clock, I have to leave and teach them the basics of renewable energy and the basics of power electronics. So in a few years, they can come and join you in this exciting new adventure. So, Brian, thank you. All right, thanks, Daniel. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, pull up my slides here. Share a screen. This is a little bit of a technology experiment since I'm going to be uh, broadcasting this. Uh, just a heads up, um, I am also doing another thing that makes this a little bit of an experiment too is uh, I am going to be recording the event here and the plan here is that when the event concludes we'll post this on the website. So if there's any speakers where that's an issue, just please let me know and, and we can uh, disable the Okay, so to begin, I, I, I wanna just thank everyone for, for coming out here and traveling all this way to be here in uh, sunny Seattle. And uh, uh, I also wanna begin by acknowledging the, the support we had for, for putting on this event from the Department uh, of Electrical and Computer Engineering and also the Clean Energy Institute. So if it wasn't for them, um, we wouldn't have been able to put this on. So, so thank you to them. Okay, so again, welcome to here at University of Washington. Um, let me see. Sorry. Okay, so here's uh, the pictures of the campus and the, the cherry blossoms were actually peaking uh, recently. So I don't know what they look like now, but if you have time, you, you might be able to see them. We also have the, the, the Husky here. So that's our mascot. And of course, it wouldn't be Seattle without a nice cup of coffee to, to keep us all going. And uh, so welcome again. Okay, so I want to just begin real quickly to tell you about the, the power area here at the University of Washington. So here are the uh, three faculty members that um, work in the power systems and and I uh, handle the power electronics area. So, so Daniel just uh, welcomed everyone. And then we also have Baozhen Zhang, who's maybe hiding somewhere in the audience or he'll be popping in later. He, he's also in our group and uh, works on uh, optimization and power systems. And uh, I work kind of at this boundary of power systems and power electronics. And then uh, I wanted to say, again, acknowledge the, uh, the committee. So if you, uh, consider Daniel and myself, plus these four individuals here. These comprise the organizing committee. So, uh, so thanks to all of you for helping, uh, helping me organize this and uh, get this off the ground. Okay, so we're, we're gonna be here for the next couple days. And so there are important things that we need to uh, cover. So one of them is there is a Starbucks um, a couple floors down, pretty much just below us. So if you want snacks or coffee other than, than standard drip coffee, if you want your, your frappuccino, you can go ahead and get it down there if you want. Uh, there's the bathrooms over there. And then uh, we'll also be providing box lunches. So there's also gonna be some food. I can't guarantee that it will look like that, but you will get some sort of box lunch and you'll see what it is. Okay. All right, so really what brings us here is to talk about uh, the, the science and the, the technical challenges that are ahead of us as, as a community. And, and when I say community, that, that's the umbrella term for those of us that work in power systems, power electronics, 
in control systems. It's really going to have to be a collaborative and multidisciplinary effort to pull this off. Well, what exactly are we trying to pull off? We're really trying to uh, transform the way the power system is built. And it's not necessarily the case that we are actively transforming it. It is just happening just by nature and the way the market moves and the way technology develops. So if you look at renewables and storage technologies, pretty much um, most of them, if not all of them, have a major role for power electronics. They're the interface that actually takes this energy resource and interfaces it to the grid. And the way you control that power electronics is key to how things function. So under the, the present day um, assumption, or maybe you could say uh, in the past, we always assumed that a system had a large amount of rotating inertia. Essentially, all of the uh, machines on a given power grid uh, were providing a nice rigid uh, frequency profile across the system as well as a voltage profile on the system. And under the classical assumption, if you just have a little tiny inverter that exists on the grid, then that little tiny inverter can assume it has a uh, nice stable voltage and frequency it can lock onto and inject a current into the grid. So the terminology we use to describe that, and this is also discussed in the roadmap document, is a grid following, and that is the way that all converters that are connected on the grid today are controlled. And that has worked well, but if you just now fast forward and imagine that you're gradually uh, replacing these fossil fuel driven generators with power electronics, things that have no moving parts, it's all just digital controls and electronics, we could be moving towards something like on the right hand side here, where um, it could be that almost the entire grid eventually could be mostly uh, powered by electronics. And so obviously that's a very different paradigm. So in, under that paradigm, if you're a, a power electronic inverter, you can't assume that, that a machine is giving you something nice and stable that you can lock onto. So all of the units, or at least a subset of the units on the grid have to play an active role on maintaining voltages and frequency across a given system. And so the, the, Umbrella term for describing converters that can uh, regulate uh, voltages and frequency on a system in a decentralized fashion is what we call grid forming. And that's the, the key uh, emphasis that we'll be covering throughout uh, the talk. Okay, so here's just getting a little bit into the technical side of things and also getting some basics out of the way. So the left-hand side here, I am showing uh, the conventional way that, uh, that basically all power electronics on the grid today are controlled. And the key piece of this is what I call this PLL. This is a phase-locked loop. And that right now, it is not a settled question as to exactly what constitutes a grid-following or grid-forming inverter. And for the sake of having a concrete way of defining things in our document, we, that was our, essentially our litmus test to tell if something is grid following or grid forming. So if something has a phase lock loop, what that means is that it needs to uh, track the grid voltage angle that it sees at its terminals. And if it's using that as a primary function to dictate its timing, it is a following unit. It is the PLL, the phase lock loop that you could say is the heart of this following functionality. So that is what we use to define what is uh, grid following. On, when it comes to grid forming controllers, there are a variety of uh, control methods that have been around for years. Uh, here is a, a snapshot of uh, three of the, the main ones that have been proposed. Uh, probably, uh, they're even listed here left to right in, um, in, uh, from most mature to least mature. So the most mature one is droop control, which has been around since the, the mid early 90s. Well, actually it goes even farther back than that. It goes back almost 100 years for machines, but for power electronics, droop control is around uh, since the 90s and has been used to uh, do a lot of really great work on microgrids. And then uh, more recently, uh, there's been a fair amount of work on programming power electronics and inverters to emulate the behavior of rotating machinery. So we call that uh, virtual synchronous machines. Some people call them synchronverters. Um, and then if you, if you include the full dynamics of an emulated machine within a converter, 
that is usually what people refer to when they say a virtual synchronous machine. There's something also closely related to that, where if you just emulate the inertia part, not necessarily the voltage dynamics of a fictitious exciter, but if you only have the rotating, uh, rotational dynamics, some people just call that virtual inertia. So that, those are kind of two concepts that are closely related. And then the one that's a little bit more um, unique and different and new is, is a controller I've been working on, which is the virtual oscillator method. And there'll be at least another talk today that is uh, related to that particular type of control strategy. And it, at first, what I'll say is that this virtual oscillator seems very different, but it turns out that it has a lot of common functionalities with droop control and even the virtual machine. And, and so actually all of these three controllers have a, a core similar functionality. They all have these droop laws embedded inside of them. And that is what allows them to do this decentralized formation of, of grid systems. So that is um, what is drawn down here. And what I'm also indicating down here is that these converters act, if you're staring into their terminals, more like a voltage source rather than a current source. And that makes sense that if you wanna build a decentralized infrastructure, you need things to prop up the, uh, the voltage on a given system. Okay, so that's just the technical side. We'll, we'll get more into depth into that. Okay, the other thing too is the, uh, the roadmap document that I, I distributed. Um, so hopefully everyone here had a chance to, to take a glance at what's in that. Um, so the intention of this document is we wanted to lay a little bit of groundwork so that the reader understands what has been done so far, what is the state of the art, uh, we do a little bit of legwork in the beginning of the document, just defining these control types and, and what is needed. And then the remainder of the document is, is really trying to lay out what are the key open research questions that need to be solved uh, over the coming years to really make this happen and, and, uh, and pull off this transformation of a given power system. So there's, uh, we discuss frequency control, voltage control, uh, protection is a big issue too. So in, in the current setting, if, if you have a fault on a system, you can rely on large synchronous machines to provide uh, relatively large short circuit currents to trip off protection. It turns out that with power electronics and the semiconductor dev devices that are used to, to create them, they cannot handle uh, large overcurrents. And so we have to rethink how protection is done. Fault write through is another issue. So um, here, this is particularly important for grid forming inverters because they act like voltage sources. So if you short a voltage source, obviously it's going to provide a massive amount of current. But here the catch is that the power electronics uh, can't provide very large amounts of currents for extended periods without uh, damaging those converters. So we have to rethink also how uh, fault ride through is done with these new types of controllers that we'll be discussing. Uh, there's a fair amount of work that needs to be done on modeling and simulation so that you can actually model these things for bulk grids. So if you look at positive sequence system simulation software, uh, that obviously has been tailored for, for modeling large synchronous machines and bulk systems. And if we look at what is needed to start modeling converters in a more comprehensive way, where like, we have to capture uh, phenomena at shorter time scales, so we have to push the boundaries of what the software is capable of doing. And we also need to have a, a, a very a keen balance or be keenly aware of having a good balance between accuracy and actually having something that is computationally efficient. So there's a fair amount of work that um, is left to be done there, and, and we do have some, uh, at least one or two talks today that are gonna be touching on this very important topic. And then the, the most exciting one is standards. And uh, so here there's uh, all the rules and regulations that, that dictate how uh, power converters and power electronics um, must abide by when they connect to the grid. And if you look at the way the standards and, and rules are set up today, they're, they're entirely within this framework of, of the uh, grid following type uh, current source uh, behavior of converters. And if you start transitioning to things that behave more like voltage sources, and you compare that against what these standards and rules look like, a lot of these things are, are, are conflicting with each other and completely at odds. So we have to rethink how 
uh, those are also structured to accommodate uh, the controller. Okay, so uh, the way I look at it is that this tackling this problem is a multifaceted and it's a, a grand challenge, I would say. It's gonna involve a, a lot of smart, dedicated people uh, contributing things. So the, the speakers uh, come from all walks of life here. So we have uh, people from uh, you know, government, uh, we have people from uh, research institutes, we have people from industry, academia. And so, uh, yeah, here we have an, uh, the people, I think, to, to give us all the various perspectives to, to really understand what's going on here. And I see some puzzled looks on their faces. You're probably wondering what, who is Iron Man here. Um, yeah, so there, there were some people I, I couldn't find their images on, on, on Google Images, but I do know who is who here. So, um, for instance, I think, yeah, Hulk here, this is Greg Kern. One of these is Dave Porter, and, uh, and, and of course, all the academics have their pictures because we're all, we're all just uh, taking pictures of ourselves and, and writing papers while all the industry folks are getting the hard work done. Wait. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I didn't want to mix the two worlds together. So, uh, you know. Okay, great. Well, um, yeah, I think we, we've moved through the introductions pretty quickly here. And maybe we can just take a, a quick 10 minute little pause and, uh, and maybe just we can kind of say hi to each other a little bit. And then we'll, we'll pick back up right at, um, at the half hour mark with, with Mark Alstrom. So thanks everybody. <laughs>